Welcome to another fantastic episode of Pitch Cafe podcast. This is a place where talent meets coffee. Today our guest is talking about a really hot topic that is how to get customers on the internet on a digital platform. Everyone on the internet is thinking about this. How do I increase my user base? How do I increase the eyeballs on my post? And today our guest has been there done that and cracked this whole pipeline. B2B business models developed by word of mouth by customer recommendations and by influence but D2C and B2C models are very difficult and Sneha Lundia Agarwal CEO of Step to Growth who's our guest today knows all about it and will share her nuggets of wisdom she is Silicon Valley Business Journal's Woman of Influence 2021 she is also a member of Forbes Council and her articles are enlightening millions of readers today on how to make your startup succeed through your efforts in marketing so without further ado let us step to our own growth with sneha lundia agarwal sneha it is indeed a pleasure and honor to have you on the podcast welcome to pitch cafe Thanks a lot Vida it's a pleasure to be here and just chat with you about all things startup and marketing So Sneha tell us a little bit about some of the biggest myths in marketing Every time I listen about marketing tactics or tips in marketing something seems to have changed in the market So tell us a little bit about some of the myths you're trying to bust with your startup Step to Growth So a great question and I'm glad you asked this. I think when I talk to startups and specifically startup leaders there is this myth that you do one post and it will go viral. And <laughs> that's not how it works. Like no marketing works that way. That is like I feel that uh, founders need to understand or anybody who's trying to create their outreach that all of this takes time any startup was not successful overnight media in media you feel it that way that that was an overnight success but that's not true please look at what went along for the past 10 years 15 years like how founders have been able to be successful and just a couple of posts on social media is not going to create that viral effect you might be lucky but i don't think you want to be lucky in for the wrong reasons so be careful and be consistent and you will reach your audience i can guarantee you that but you just have to be consistent and not dream about one post and going viral with that i'd like to move on to the next question uh that is how does your marketing agency step to growth differentiate itself you know what is your mission and you mentioned the word marketing incubator uh, in our conversation what does it actually do what does step to growth do what is your mission statement so step to growth is like it's like a marketing incubator it's not like a typical incubator i use the term incubator because just like in any other incubator you get that support you need to reach from point a to point b and we are that support for any startup specifically in that early stages and the reason we focus on early stage startup is because nobody really thinks about marketing at that stage and 50% of the startups fail because of not thinking about marketing at the right time or not doing it the right way so i want to avoid that and uh, so step to growth is all about creating that value for early stage startups educating them on how to create the right marketing plan and then supporting them in terms of building the right foundation to go and execute that plan how we are different is our we we share our secret sauce so we train startups we uh, once we've helped them create their foundation we help build their marketing team we start by maybe uh, hiring a marketing intern or a part time marketing manager who can execute those initial social media campaigns or initial email campaigns 
our aim is for startups to be self sufficient for their marketing now i know that you cannot be 100% self sufficient uh, and i would not even encourage a startup to go and hire the entire marketing team but there are few things which i always push a startup to own after they worked with us specifically creating content internally uh, creating and doing these small outreaches like social media and email campaigns you can work with a company for design work and i don't expect you to you know a startup to have world class designers or you can hire somebody to do paid ads but these other smaller things they should be like you should learn to do it internally because you'll be more focused and you know your language best at an early stage as opposed to anyone else outside the company so we are there to just help support educate guide mentor and provide services to early stage startups but with an aim of making sure they are self sufficient at the end you know sneha this word marketing incubator it really fascinates me it's so new i've heard of startup incubators but marketing incubator is something really new so tell us a little bit about what you're doing uh, outside the startup world how are you collaborating with corporates are you doing anything with uh, the co- large corporations or the bigger companies at all please tell us a little bit more so yes we are in the middle of working with a uh, corporate so i can't name them we are still kind of figuring things out uh but we are working with corporates to help them it's it's more of a marketplace kind of a corporate or any other corporate who wants to get access to the startups we work with and from a startup point of view we want to continue to add value to startups in their growth journey so making sure that they are connected and aligned in their visions and providing the right connection between the corporate and the startup so that there is mutual win win for both of them so that's one piece other partners we work with are accelerators like general accelerators i am founder institute is one of the accelerators where we work very closely with i run their marketing the marketing portion of their entire cohort for multiple locations for silicon valley for sure but also for seattle and and uh, i know their curriculum very well because i'm leading it and i know what the gaps are and that's so keeping that in mind we've actually uh, we have a, a diy kind of marketing incubation product launching soon but the idea is to work with these incubators and accelerators globally to educate founders at the right time about marketing and to make sure they're not making mistakes like i said like i've had random questions asked to me i've had startups spend thousands of dollars buying email lists for promotions and that's a big no no at an early stage like you should know where to spend your money yeah. then we also partner with vcs more focused on providing education to their startups at the same time uh, adding value to our startups by connecting them with the uh, leading accelerators or vcs many uh, people from outside ecosystems are partnering with founders institute so with that and your portfolio consisting of vcs and corporations and all of that you have really have a big portfolio and experience can i ask you what was one of the most favorite projects most energizing projects for you in step to growth and why why was it your favorite project so i feel like any time you know if you ask me what's the most exciting project it's been my own company for me and it, because even we have grown in a very different way but uh, working with startups is really exciting in both the ways it's exciting but i've had uh, everything is not always good right when it you you've seen both sides uh, you have to see both sides of things so we've have startups who've been acquired but we've also had startups who've not done very well so that kind of gives us that background of understanding what works and what does not uh, but if i had to choose i don't want to name startups otherwise other startups will be mad at me that you know why did you not choose us but um, one of the startups which is really my favorite is uh, let me just name them it's called club king uh, and the reason why i liked 
I love this startup is the founder and CEO of this company is a senior citizen and uh, he he didn't know technology how to use it they approached us with creating a platform for them to teach the card game bridge online to senior citizens Mm-hmm. So I like this project more because it was challenging the audience was very different till date I had before that I had only worked with people who knew technology very well and were tech savvy so it's easier to kind of communicate and work with them but this is a whole new audience and uh, I more step step to growth focuses mainly on B2B tech companies we do pick on a few other innovative startups just like Club King but we are picky about those and so everything from their creating their branding to positioning them to actually creating the platform and engaging with helping them bring on the first customers and training their team to be self sufficient that entire journey taught me so much that that's why i feel it's very special and uh, they were one of the first startups who are truly self sufficient today like they don't need us at all we've trained their entire team to take care of everything from executing email campaigns to bringing on board new customers to even making edits to the website so i think like that entire journey has been great So this is a great example a great case study of a marketing incubator sneha i think and uh, i also have had uh, my fair share of experiences working with senior citizens they do get overwhelmed with tech- technology and that makes step to growth a very human centric marketing incubator and i really like that so uh, that being said i have this question about your certifications and your degree uh, your mba what is the importance of having an mba or a you know management certification does it really help at all or all these things can they be learned on their own a lot of people think a lot before signing up for mba so what do you think what was your personal experience especially for the marketing or career aspirants who are listening to this podcast so uh, so i do have an mba and uh, i did my mba from one of the best p schools in india i feel that having learning a few skills is critical like for example accounting you need that to be an entrepreneur like you have to know how to understand your balance sheet so uh, there are some skill sets which an mba degree can help but at the same time i feel that the learning can never stop so yeah. you cannot just get that degree and be done with it even today i spend time in educating myself and understanding what's happening in the industry when it comes to associating yourself or getting that degree like for me the biggest advantage of a degree is more to do with its alumni network mm-hmm. so i would pick school which has a good alumni network and has a close knit alumni network i did my mba from uh, niti mumbai and we have a very good alumni network a very close knit alumni network all of us are supporting each other niti has uh, i think three or four uh, unicorns now, now. so yeah that support helps yeah. and that is like that is more valuable to me than the curriculum like that's an added advantage and you can read and learn from multiple courses but like if somebody is thinking about mba do look at the alumni network and make sure that that helps so this is really great uh, uh point uh you know that you're bringing up the alumni networks are making a world of difference if you look at universities like stanford or harvard they have a lot of things going on uh, they have these uh, regular meetups uh, they have the angel networks they have hackathons and uh, there are a lot of ways the alumni networks are catalyzing the startup ecosystem so i think you brought a a, a very valid point and um, uh, i do think that Uh, subjects like accounting must be learned uh, for running a financially disciplined organization so great points made there i also think that the way you're describing marketing here it it aligns with the methodology called product led growth you think about marketing from the day one and uh, an incubator like step to growth which you are the founder of definitely definitely looks into this uh, thinking right from day one so you don't waste your startup dollars uh, you are very very savvy about how you spend money on marketing right from the day one now with that being uh, said i just want to bring this question up this is a burning question 
what was it like uh, being labeled as silicon valley woman of influence 2021 by the silicon valley business journal this is the top startup ecosystem in the world's most competitive how did it feel uh, being called as a woman of influence in silicon valley so frankly it it still feels unreal to me like i still can't believe that okay this happened and this happened to me uh, i grew up and i was born uh, grew up in a small town in india and like that that girl never thought that you know something like this could have ever happened yeah. uh, so i still feel like uh, unreal i still feel that was it all like am i still worthy for something like that consider it's it's more for me it's more about i still have so much to do and uh, i i still want to do so much so this is not this is just the beginning and uh, yeah i i feel the feeling is just unreal but at the same time i'm extremely grateful and uh, humbled by the fact that uh, people thought that my profile and the work i've been doing is worthy of such an honor I certainly endorse your title of Silicon Valley Woman of Influence by Silicon Valley Business Journal because uh, what you're doing with your marketing incubator is like none other. It's a very unique idea. You're bringing in a lot of thought leadership into it. So you definitely have my vote. With that, I'd like to wrap up this podcast, this amazing podcast. All good things have to come to an end. But before we let you go, what is that one thing which you would like to leave the audience with that are startup aspirants marketing career aspirants listening to this what is that one thing you'd like to tell them so the one thing which i feel uh, most of the times is missing is that human touch so i have been able to be successful at i don't even like successful is the wrong word maybe but like i've been able to reach where i am today because of two main things one is i surround myself with people who believe in me and support me and two i am extremely passionate about what i do i love what i do so these two things like keep this in mind and focus on these things money follows everything else follows if you just listen to your heart and you have people around you who are encouraging you to do that so like that that's my uh, you know two cents when it comes to being where you want to be and doing what you want to do on that note of surrounding yourself with inspiring people inspiring things and like i am doing right now surrounding myself with these amazing ideas sneha is bringing up uh we will wrap up this podcast but hey there's one thing i'm itching to ask sneha about sneha you are a woman of influence you are a role model to women leaders what can you tell them before you leave this podcast about what has worked for you uh you know and what are those things which keep you going as a woman entrepreneur as a, a founder as a woman leader what helps you with your challenges please just one more before you go uh one thing is we are strong and we've got this so let's just do it like don't don't ever doubt yourself i i surround myself not with people but also things which i like to look at my desk is full of inspiration i've got a cube here which says you got this i've got a pen stand which says girl you are powerful go prove it to the world so <laughs> all of this kind of just keeps me energized so and uh, I feel that's the difference between a a, a woman and a, a you know a man and a woman and I I embrace it fully like behind me uh, I have posters which will say uh, that you're born fearless and you know, things like that so anything which inspires surround yourself with that and we've got this yeah we can we can do anything so never as- underestimate yourself thanks so much sneha this was an absolute pleasure having you on pitch cafe i would love to have you again thank you so much absolutely it was a pleasure and thanks a lot for inviting me